Hi, this is Mark Spencer from Ripple Training. This is a quick tutorial on how to use the history timeline as part of the Ripple Timelines uh, collection of transition effects. So before we get started, I just want to mention that uh, you should definitely also check out the help button within Final Cut Pro 10 when you've applied any of these transitions. It will take you to a set of overview tutorials that covers the general process for using these each of these transitions while this tutorial focuses on this particular transition. All right, let's get started. So the history uh, Ripple timeline is the third one in the Transitions browser under Ripple Timelines. And it doesn't have to be used for history. I'm just moving the uh, playhead across it so we can see it play. And it can be used for just about anything, but it's got some built-in maps, which makes it very useful for historical types of timelines. I'm going to drag it on to a couple of clips that are about the American Civil War. And I'm also going to make it longer. It's four seconds by default, uh, but frequently these work even better if they're a little longer. If you have the media to handle it, you can see as I drag out, I'm hitting the end of my media. What that represents is this outgoing clip doesn't have any more extra media to use, but this should be long enough for our purposes. And let me just play through it here. So that's the default animation of this timeline. Now, let's take a look in the inspector and see some things that we can do with it. The first thing is uh, there's quick tips, like there are with all of these, that you can review on, on how to work with and, and modify this transition. And then under the view, uh, currently we're in the camera view, which is the default view, the animation. And their framing is set to wide, which means when the camera pulls back and we're in the middle of the transition, as you can see here, we see the entire timeline. In this case, we've got transition A and transition B, and we've got these four different drop zones that are available. You can choose to use them or not. Uh, the other framing options that are built in are medium, which pulls the camera back, but not quite as far. As you can see here, it's in a little tighter. And then there's a close framing, which stays in very close. The basic idea being that if you're going to use the transition several times in the same project, you may want to go wide the first time to give your viewers a sense of the entire timeline. But then on subsequent uses of this transition, you probably don't need to pull all the way out again. They've already seen that, and you can just move from transition to transition and just show a section of the timeline to see where we're going instead of viewing the whole thing. Let's go back to the wide view. Uh, for any of those views that you choose, you can adjust the framing, and we'll do that in just a minute using these controls down here. Let's go to the director view. The director view is a static view that doesn't change even if the playhead moves within the transition that allows you to adjust the position of your transitions and drop zones. So let's, let's mess around things a little bit here. Uh, let's say, for example, that we actually don't want all of these. So we've got six by default, right? We have six dates, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have six possible clips, the two transitions and the four drop zones. And here we see the labels transition A, transition B, and the drop zones one, two, three, and four. And by the way, these labels of the drop zones are this gray color that is not that legible here, uh, but hopefully it's legible when you change different, uh, different backgrounds, different colors, different graphics, because you may use something that's black or white, and if I made this black, you wouldn't be able to read it against black. So, but hopefully you can read which of these are. Okay, so let's say, in fact, that we only want to have two drop zones. So I'm just going to scroll down immediately in the inspector. All the drop zone information in each of these transitions is always the bottom stuff. So I'm going to go down. Here's drop zone one, all the controls for it. I'm going to turn off drop zone one under the show drop zone one checkbox, and it disappears. And I can even then, uh, instead of turning it off, you can just drag it out of the way. I'm actually going to drag these on-screen controls off the screen just so they don't bother us. And then I'll go down to drop zone four and uncheck the show drop zone checkbox there, and it disappears. And let's again, let's just drag its on screen controls away so we don't see them. So if we only want four, we also only want four timeline elements, and we can get rid of those in a similar way. I can, uh, you can double click on them and just delete the text, or in this case, I'll drag the text off the screen on the left and on the right. And then these divider bars, we don't want either. And that's what these controls are for. So I'll just drag those divider bars off for each side. 
By the way, if you do want to get those back, if I press Command minus to zoom out, you can see all of those controls are still there and we could drag any of those items uh, back onto the screen. I'm going to hit Shift Z to fit it back to the window. So now we just have four. And I may want to spread them out more, but you can freely move these dates and the bars uh, to spread them out exactly where you want them. I'm not going to try to get it perfect here. So something like that. Let's also say we want to start with transition A. So one thing that's unique about this particular transition is you can change how high or low these things are, and the little bar will stretch with it and the text will move with it. So let's say I want to start up about here. And then I want transition B to be next. So I'm going to move drop zone 2 over and go to transition B. Now, I would like transition B to be below the line. And if you drag it down, that doesn't really work exactly right. You can see the little extender bar uh, doesn't stay really in the right place. But what you can do is flip the tra this, this transition. So if we scroll down in the inspector, right before all the drop zone controls are controls for each transition, transition A and transition B. And there's an option to flip it. So I'm going to click flip transition B, which will move it below the timeline. And then I can use the on-screen control. You have to drag it in the opposite direction, but I can set it up about where I want. Um, then I want drop zone two to be up top. So I'll go down to drop zone two, which is currently being flipped, and I'll uncheck that so it's not flipped anymore. And I'll put that there. Okay, so you've got free, free flexibility to organize these things and put them exactly where you want them. The other thing you can do is you can move the transition itself independent of the stem if you wanted it to be beside the stem. So maybe we can do that. Uh, this is really useful if you have graphics that you want to scale up and, and put in different locations. But we can move each of these independently of the stem and the text will move with them. Then the text you can also move independently. So we can have this label that we'll see during the transition uh, perhaps be below it there, and maybe for transition A, it'll be above it. And you can change the text just by double clicking on it and typing new text. I'll type Civil War here just so you can see that. Okay, so I've got my arrangement that I want, uh, and you can change the dates, and look, obviously the dates are wrong here. And 1879, uh, I don't know the exact dates that we put in there, but you could put your dates in. So let's go back to the camera view and see what's changed here. And right away, you'd be like, wait a minute, what's happened? It's kind of messed up because now the camera is starting way to the left and it's not going far, very far over and it's just pulling straight back and it's revealing the edge of the timeline. So if we were to play this now, when the camera pulls back for this wide view, uh, it doesn't look right. So very easy to adjust, and that brings us to these uh, adjust camera path controls. In this case, uh, we want the camera to kind of move over as it pulls back. So I'm going to drag right for in uh, camera path X to reveal the whole timeline. There we go, and not show the edge of it. And then for Y, I'll have it come down. And that's kind of the framing I want. So the key is to move the playhead to the center of the transition before you do this. That's the point the camera is the furthest back. And then adjust these X and Y controls. This particular transition just has X and Y because it's really not a 3D transition like the other ones. So now if I play that transition, we pull back and we just reveal exactly what we want to reveal before we push into transition B. By the same token, if we change our framing, for instance, to medium, when we play that, it pulls back, but maybe we want to change the animation a little bit. Let's go back to the middle. Let's say uh, by this point in time, we really want to be looking at transition B. So I'm going to adjust the path again. I'm going to have it go up a little higher and maybe over a little bit like that. So now if we play this, we leave transition A and we more quickly move over to look at transition B before we zoom in on it. Then finally, just to finish the idea, with the playhead in the middle, I'll go to a close framing. And in this case, as it plays through, it moves over to the reel of the next one. But maybe there's not really enough time to read the text. So with the playhead in the middle, and it doesn't have to be in the middle, but that's where I like to do it. 
uh, I'm going to reframe this so we can really see transition B front and center there. So by the time we reach the middle of the transition, we're looking right at transition B. So if I play that now, in the close framing, we pull back and then go right into transition B. And I might adjust that a little bit more because we can see as it moves over, it kind of moves down further. So I'll say, ah, I don't want it to do quite that far. So with the playhead a little further in the transition, I'll say I want it to come in here so we can clearly see the date, 1858. I just put a date in there. Uh, just to show you, you can change this text. You don't need to be in director view to, to change any text. And then we should have a little transition that we like the movement for. There we go, perfect. Okay, so with that done, let's go back to the wide view and let's also adjust that view back to what we had before so we can look at how we can change the colors and backgrounds to further modify and tailor this to make it look the way we want. Um, as we move down, we've got a, an upper background. This particular transition has an upper and a lower background instead of just one. Uh, by default, there's this thing called map A, but there's also map B and map C. And for each map, we have a gradient. I'm gonna go back to map A for, actually, I'll just stay on map C, it doesn't really matter. So the gradient by default is this white to blue, but you can change these colors. I'm gonna right click on the color swatch to, to any colors that you want. And you can add additional color tags in here and move them around to really get exactly the look that you're going for by modifying the gradient. So any color that you want for those maps, and then instead of maps, you can just use a gradient. And if you choose the gradient, you can kind of see that it looks orange. You look for the orange gradient. There it is, upper gradient. You can go in and modify uh, the colors of that gradient as well, the same way. So I won't do that again. Uh, but you can also modify the start and end points. So we could rotate this gradient so it's not straight from top to bottom. It can be a little more angled and create a very different kind of look. And then maybe we'll go from light uh, dark orange to a lighter color. So just an idea of how you could modify the gradient. Let's close that back up again. Instead of a gradient, you could have a solid color for the background. And then you would scroll down to where it says upper solid and change the color there. And then instead of a solid color, you could have a drop zone. So you can put any of your own content back there. So I'll click on the drop zone well. I'll select this cloud shot just as an example and click apply clip. And then I'll deselect and reselect the transition so that I can then modify that background. You can scale it up and you can pan it around to get it just where you want. And then you can also blur it if it tends to conflict too much with the drop zones and transitions and text. Sometimes it can make the other stuff harder to read, so you can blur it out. I'm going to set it back to 100% because I'll show you something kind of interesting here. Uh, we'll leave it in there. I'll also set the blur to zero and make sure it's not panned at all. Because once you've dealt with that, there is a lower background that you can adjust. It can be a gradient, it can be a solid color, or it could be a drop zone. And for each of those choices below, we can change the color, change the gradient. We've already covered how to do that. The thing I want to mention about the drop zone is this can be a completely different drop zone than the top one, or it could be the same one. If you want to be have continuity, if you've left the top one at 100% without panning it around, if I put the same content in the lower one, uh, they'll perfectly match each other. So you can have a, an entire drop zone across the entire thing. And because the drop zone moves, in this case, you probably want to scale it up. You can see it's revealing itself a little bit there. So we could change the camera animation or we could scale it up. Let's go ahead and change both of these back. Let's go back to uh, map A and let's go back on the lower drop zone, on the lower background, sorry, to a gradient. From there, we have a bunch of color controls uh, for the text color, which means the text that identifies each of these drop zones and transitions, the frames for each of these, you can change the color, the stems uh, for these little uh, sticks that pick up, that poke up here, you can change, oops, sorry, changed the wrong thing there, for the stem color. And then these stems have heads also and a little outline. And if you want to see better, what you can do is hit Command Plus a few times with the viewer being active to zoom in to see what those look like. And here we can change the, the head fill color or the outline. 
to really customize this thing. Then these dividers, you can change the colors of those as well. And you can make them a little wider or you can make them skinnier. And I, t I wouldn't go too wide because they start to go over the timeline itself, but we can make them a little skinnier. We can change the color of the years. It says year color. Of course, you might change these to be months or something else, but year color refers to, to these guys in the timeline. You can change their colors. And then let's go ahead and press Shift-Z to fit this back to the window. We can actually change the bar gradient itself. This bar has a gradient that is fully adjustable to any colors that you, that you want to use. And uh, I won't do the whole thing here, but I'll just give you a general idea how you can change that bar color and kind of give it a shine. Um, then for each transition and drop zone, you can choose whether or not they have a frame independently. And turning off a frame is useful if you want to add graphics. You can flip them as we saw. You can change the font and the font size. And then for the drop zones, you can change the content and turn them on or not. So all the rest of these uh, parameters here refer to each drop zone where you can change its content and uh, add, um, change the text size and change the font. So those are the basic properties of how to change and work with the history transition in the Ripple Timelines collection of transitions.